Hey everyone, this is Mr. Jaso here today, and today I'm shooting a uh, 100 subscriber thank you video. And uh, I've been really thinking of something to come up with that would make for a good video, and so I thought of something that um, I, don't, I haven't seen any YouTube videos about so far. So, um, for making top tools, that is, tools that you strike with a hammer, or somebody strikes for you with the sledgehammer. This, for instance, is a straight chisel with a handle. And um, it's a lot of work to uh, punch a hole through bigger size stock and uh, put the drift through, grow the eye, because uh, you need to go through all those steps to make a proper eye that'll stay on a handle. So um, there's another option instead of going through all that, and uh, for maybe for a tool that you're not going to use all that much, is like this. Uh, steel handle as you can see and um, I believe this is a farrier's tool and uh, you see farriers use stuff like this all the time with um, a piece of you know good tool steel whatever type of tool it is and then just a steel handle either welded on or like this which is um, this is called hot incising so this is the what I'm going to show you how to do today and here's the materials I'm going to be using is a piece of one inch steel off of a weightlifting bar. You can see it's got this little curve in it. That's the end that I'm going to make into the strike end. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hot cut or a, a chisel on a stick like this, except it's going to be diagonal to the handle. And then what I'm going to use for the handle material is this piece of 916. Um, it's some sort of a hanger. It's got threads on one end and this hook on the other end and uh, it's got some carbon in it. I had a couple of these and I cut one up and made a center punch out of it and it uh, holds up pretty good so here's the materials that you're going to need is a piece of decent carbon steel and you could use mild steel for the handle a pair of tongs to hold your stuff um, a center punch will come in handy or you could just drill these holes and a hammer so um, I'll get back with you when I start working on the um, the tool head, I guess you would call it. So, thanks for watching. Alright everyone, so I have the piece of steel going to be the head of the tool, all nice and hot. I decided to make the piece, the end with the curve into the chisel end. So I'm going to start off with the round die. Straighten the bend a little bit. chisel so you basically just flatten stop flattening until you got it as wide as you want which you want this one to be very wide and nice and thick at the end and also again with the rounding hammer you can direct it if it's bulging one one way or the other decided to use the piece that was curved for the chisel end because there would be less fish mouthing. Fish mouthing is when you're forging a piece and it starts to cup over on itself and make a, a void. So um, now we're going to probably switch to the flat die over the far edge here and just get it nice and thin. I hope the camera is picking this up. The uh, lighting in that last video wasn't the greatest, but there's not a lot I can do about that. So that's that's what we got. That's forged down, it's probably about an inch and a quarter wide or so. Straighten that a little bit. So it's um, central right down the middle. And now I'm going to mark for the holes. I already have the handle made, I spared you guys that. So um, I'm going to mark for the holes, center punch them 
and then I'm going to cheat a little bit and drill, this is 9 16 I'm going to drill some half inch holes and then I'm going to use a drift to open them up to just under or right around 9 16 and then the whole theory behind this is that when something is heated it expands so the holes are going to be just about big enough when it's hot for these to fit in and I'm going to pound them in and then when it's cooled the holes will shrink around this steel and I'll have a handle and then uh... but before I do that actually I do need to forge the strike and forge a, a hexagon on the end of this which I guess I'll show in the next clip and then um... I guess we'll fast forward after that to the uh... handle and another thing with the handle is you want this to have a little bit of spring to it so then when you go to put it in you can sort of squeeze them together drive them into the holes and then that when they on spring it'll sort of lock them more into the holes as well So. Anyways, we'll get back to you pretty soon. Alright everyone, so we got our piece of uh, stock, or our headpiece, nice and hot. And so now is going to be the moment of truth. Grab this and show you. We'll get all this uh, stuff out of the holes. Drilled some half inch holes after I center punched. And now this is going to be the moment of truth. You can see I have the, an the handle indexed one way. I might need a pair of tongs to squeeze these together, so I'm going to go ahead and get that all ready. Grab my hammer. See if we can't line these up and bang them in there. Not quite wanting to go. I think I just don't have them aligned correctly. Let me try this by hand instead of using the tongs. This is my first time doing this. So, um... Let's see. Yep, there they go. A little bit off to one side. But I think we're going to do it. Starting to go. I really should have marked this handle so that I can tell how deep exactly I've got these driven in, but I think we're going to get there. Looking pretty good so far. Alright, well you can see they're going in. And um, so now, I don't really know how far they went in, but as this cools, those holes should contract around the rods that make up this handle and squeeze them in there forever, basically. So um, that's uh, sort of a quick and dirty way to make a top tool without having to slit it and drift it open and all that. This is only a piece of inch round so that wouldn't have been too big of a deal but um, I just figured I'd show this because I, I haven't seen any YouTube videos about it so far but um, there we go um, I'll let you know if it comes apart but um, I have a feeling it's in there pretty good and um, show you right here just when it's cool the hole should have shrank and pinch those together and so now this will be a, a diagonal set that you can use instead of having one that's straight this way or straight that way so everybody thanks for watching and thank you for the hundred subscribers anybody who does watch my videos thank you and uh... hope you have a good day alright everyone so this is the tool all finished out I thought I'd have, let you have a look at it all finished and uh polished up and everything or wire brushed up and uh, for a little extra security I don't know if it'll focus but I took a center punch and punched around the holes to uh, squish a little bit of material around the uh, rods going in and uh, go ahead and show you the, the one that I based this off of it's not nearly as well done as that but I don't think it's going to come off 
and uh, the head is made out of decent steel. The handle, like I said, has a little bit of carbon in it, which gave it the spring that I needed to squeeze those together to get them in, and uh, turned out pretty good. Um, as far as I know, there's no videos on YouTube of uh, showing how to do this, and this is my first attempt at it, and I think it went pretty well. So anyways, that's my 100 subscriber thank you video. Um, everybody have a good day. Thanks for watching.